Well, hello again, Pastor Ray Barnett here with you. Glad that you could be with me here on the Oasis. And as always, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Today is the day, I was going to say it's the day after Thanksgiving, but it's not. <clears throat> well, it's certainly the day the Lord has made. And uh, we have a very, very sunny day, but here, what is today's date? November 27th. We have a very cold day. Temperature is about 30 degrees with the wind. Real feels about 20 degrees. Wanted to be outside, but it's way too cold. So I decided to come here on uh, our front porch. Got some good light. And uh, I may get some road noise, I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> we can live with that. Hey, you know what? I want to talk to you today about the uh, holiday seasons, seasonal depression. We have um, many people who develop depression around the holiday seasons. And, uh, you know, for good reasons, too. You know, loved ones have passed on. Uh, things aren't going well in the home, and so on. You know, there's deaths and there's problems with the children. There's so many different things to contend with. And I wanted to share with you, it's really, I'll tell you, it's a story, but it's actually two, two people. So it's actually two stories. When I taught my renewed class some years back now, uh, we had a variety. I told you that we had about 12 people that came on a steady basis. We also had people that came and left, and they didn't do so well. But the 12 people that stuck it out with these teachings that you're getting here uh, did very, very well. But I've mentioned that to you already. There were two women, both of whom had depression. And I would say serious depression, not clinical, you know, lock them away type depression but a serious depression every Christmas season and for both of them the depression was um, related to all of the activity and all of the um, responsibilities that they had for one it was the preparation of the house and for the other, it was the, the gifts to buy for, like myself, my wife and I have five children. And we will have, come February, 13 grandchildren. So it's a lot of stress, and particularly on my wife, but she's, she's pretty hardy. She doesn't have a lot of nervous symptoms, um, but she feels stressed like everybody else. Anyway, the one sister in the Lord, she... Um, was overwhelmed by all the shopping and so on. Now, just as a note, it's interesting to me the seasons that are designed to be holidays, right? Time to be with family, time to rest, and time to relax. Often, at least in some cases, can turn into a very, very stressful situation for so, so many people. Okay, so what's the point? <clears throat> well, excuse me. <clears throat> with both of these sisters, both of these women, after, you know, during the classes and on review, in the one case, the one woman would talk about, you know, all the decorations and all of this, and it would really, it would stress her out to the point of a depression. The other, as I just mentioned, it was all the shopping and the, the children and the grandchildren and what to do. And when I, um, and I remember this, this show deals with biblical answers for anxiety and depression and the name that we used to have was God's answers for anxiety and depression. The class that I taught I simply called it Renewed. But you know both of these women would emphasize all that they and here's the word all that they had have to do had to do. So I asked the question during one of our classes and it was the holiday season like we have now, except we're at Thanksgiving, but um, I said, well, who says? Where in the Bible does it say you have to decorate your home? 
where in the Bible does it say you have to buy all of these gifts for, for everyone? And it, it was just an application of common sense. Now, most of us are going to want to do things that are, are good, whether it's decorating the house or buying for children and grandchildren gifts and so on. But when you really examine it, and there's going to be a, like, a major point to today's teaching. When you really examine it, we, we do things that are not necessarily required of us. Now, this is really the, the, the thing. This is the thing. What happens is that there are expectations either put on us by children, grandchildren, people, the community. could be anybody. And we accept that. And then we're overwhelmed by it. So I proposed the question, who said that you had to do all of this? And in both cases, it really struck a note that they thought to themselves, yeah, why do I actually feel compelled that I have to do this? The resolution in one case was for the, the woman, the sister who had to buy all of the gifts for children and grandchildren. She resolved it by saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to buy just one gift for each one. And I think in some cases she even decided just to give them some some money so as to not to overwhelm herself. The other woman, she decided that, you know what, if I don't get help decorating the house, then I'm just going to do a little bit. And that's the key. Here is the thing that I want to bring to you today. Do just don't overdo. I can speak from a lot of experience. I have always been the person that never did anything halfway. It always had to be 100, 105, 110. And what's behind that philosophy is the idea that I'm not like other people. I mean, you know, I give it my all. Now, obviously, some things in life warrant you giving a hundred, a hundred percent. But not everything in life warrants that you need to give it everything that you have. Let's go back to decorating the home. Some of you have already decorated your homes, perhaps, for Christmas. Some of you will be. And you may be the type of person that finds this very thing that I'm mentioning a problem for you. That you're overwhelmed and you get yeah. Let me say this another way. When I listen to people, uh, well, women mostly, when I listen to them talk about, oh, I hate going to the store this time of year and the lines and all of this, I've always thought to myself, it kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? I mean, if, of course, let's just take Christmas. I mean, you could throw in Thanksgiving as well. But if you're going to do all this and it's going to stress you out, and you're not going to feel good. And, and some even have to not only take medication, but take extra doses or whatever. It seems to defeat the purpose. Uh, the other extreme would be, well, I'm not going to do anything. And both of them are extremes. Now, again, I'm, I'm talking to you about my own personality. I have had a habit uh, for most of my life of, I wouldn't say I'm an extremist as much as I, I give everything I do 100%. Until finally, along the way, I began to figure out that not everything deserves or warrants 100%. Yet, on the same hand, there are certain things that are good to do and maybe necess necessary to do that doesn't require you being all out and tense and stressed out about things. If you just say, okay, you know what, I, and I'm still going to decorate or I'm still going to cook or I'm still going to buy gifts or whatever it may be. But I'm not going to go out, you know, as far as I have in the past. If you're going to go shopping, maybe you want to prepare yourself to say, um, well, this is going to be a day, you know, it's going to be the whole day. Or just say, you know, what, I'm going to this one store, or you divide it up, and so on. Because the point is, for people with nervous symptoms, there's, t there's two tendencies. Number one is to always be excessive. And that, again, comes from an inner philosophy of 
Well, I have to. And I know many, many people who are like that. And I'll say to them, why do you have to? But the, there's no answer. There's like, well, I just have to. And again, if I say, well, why do you have to? And I say this again for the third time. How do I, I learn this? Because this was how I thought. I don't know where this originated from in my life, or, or for that matter, in the life of other people. I don't know. But some of us feel like, you know, I have to. I, I, have, I have to do this. I tell you what. One of the most freeing experiences that you can have in life is to know that the only person you really have to please is God. And the beautiful thing about that is that he's a lot easier to please than human beings. That's the truth. Unfortunately, it's kind of switched around. We uh, often think of God as very difficult to please and, you know, nothing makes him happy. And people, well, maybe we got a realistic view of them. I don't know. I do. Uh, people are whimsical. They, uh, one day you're a hero, one day you're not, you know. But God is actually easy to please when we live by faith. And the only thing that you really have to do with 100% effort is to please God. You live by faith, you please God. So my suggestion to you and my advice to you is what these two women did. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the end of this, this story in their case. is the fact that both of them overcame their, I say seasonal depression, I don't mean the weather. Uh, some people get seasonal depression from uh, lack of sunlight and so forth. Uh, but I, I can say this much too. If you if you live upstate like I do, and today it's 20 degrees, real feel is 20 degrees, and it's only the end of November. Um, it's not usually the lack of light because we probably get as much light as we do, you know, most the rest of the year. It's just that it's cold. Put the two together. Anyway, I'm talking about seasonal depression that's related to the holidays. Of course, the loss. Of, there's nothing you do about the loss of loved ones and troubled marriage and. Uh, all of these things, they're just existing at the moment. Uh, death can't be fixed, of course. But your marriage can, your children can in time with prayer, faith. But I'm talking about the, the pre preparation for the holidays, specifically. And both of these women overcame their depression. I mean, for good. Just by a simple application of logic, which was, nobody said that you have to do this. Is it expected? Well, it's not even a federal law or a state law or a biblical law. Now, if you want to do it, well, that's fine. But my suggestion is, you, you, it is rather that you do, just don't overdo it. And this is a lesson that I've had to learn in my life. Do, just don't overdo. I, and maybe you can relate to this, I was my own worst enemy in respect to the fact that I demanded more of myself than most people ever did, and certainly more than God did. How does that may sound? Uh, it's the truth. I, for many years, I never worked out with a training partner, even though that's usually the, the standard advice, because a training partner is going to push you and all that. And for me, it was just the opposite. I always found training partners to be a distraction, because I'm so focused when I'm doing things that I found them to be a distraction. I still do. But when it comes to life and when it comes to the holidays, you want to be able to do, but not to overdo. So you may want to cut back on some of the things that you have uh, planned. You may want to just realize that some of the things that you're doing are not necessarily required. And you negotiate for yourself. You don't compare yourself to anybody. Just negotiate for yourself. What it is you can do a little bit less of Take the stress off, take the pressure off. Remember on this channel, I review with you all the time, tension on, in, the, in the muscles, puts tension on the nervous system, and then your body can fire off all types of, of symptoms. Relax the muscles, the nervous system begins to relax. Even aches and pains will disappear when they're related to the nervous system, and symptoms diminish, they, they, they just get better. And... As simple as this may sound to you, it's the answer for a seasonal depression. Do, just don't overdo. Negotiate the season ahead so that you're doing something 
and you're doing something good, but you're not overdoing it so that you're defeating the purpose of, especially Christmas, the love of God, the love of the Savior, where you just, you know, find yourself complaining, unhappy. Some people just roll up in bed. I mean, it's, it can get pretty bad. All right? Do, just don't overdo, and I, I guarantee you, we have Christmas is just a little bit less than a month from now. I guarantee you, you're going to be able to enjoy the holiday much more than you ever have before. So let me pray for you. Father, once again, bless my friends, especially during this holiday season. Help them to be able to truly find peace in Christ. I ask you today, God, to touch each one of my friends in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, that's all I have for you today here on my, my front porch. porch. It's a rather unprepossessing uh, place, but it's warm, warm for me, and the light is, is okay, and uh, it's good. Okay, we have a small group here. I always tell you that if you're auditing or you just bumped into this video and uh, we deal sp specifically with anxiety and depression, I'm not all over, all over the road with all kinds of topics, topics like some creators are. We deal with this. That's it. That's what we deal with. And if you'd like to be part of our group, it's a small group, it's a good group, you can subscribe, hit the notification button, and uh, it'll be a good thing. And uh, as always, I appreciate the thumbs up if you found this helpful. That'll keep us on the YouTube radar. And um, hey, what else could you ask for? <laughs> okay, tomorrow's Sunday. I'll be in the pulpit. Go over to the YouTube channel, Time for Truth Ministries. You can subscribe there and hear all my sermons. Also on my Facebook page, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can watch the message tomorrow at um, 11 a.m. That's when we broadcast. If I don't see you tomorrow in the church service, then hopefully I'll see you again on Monday right here on the Oasis. Until then, God bless.